All right. So now let's talk a little bit about the physical considerations. What is it that a conductor should look like? How is a conductor um, required to carry themselves when they're in front of an ensemble? And the first thing that I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about this concept of symmetry. And when we're talking about symmetry, it's important that we begin to consider what the human eye, the human brain, um, considers appealing, what we like. So now if you look at this Kanitsa triangle, and you can see right in the middle, it looks like there's an upside down white triangle. But if you look really close, you'll realize there is no white triangle. It's simply all of the pictures around the edges make it appear to be a white triangle in the middle. Now this is because the human brain loves symmetry. The human brain wants to make sense of what's happening in front of them. So taking the Kanitsa triangle as an example, if as a conductor, I conduct like this, all of a sudden your brain begins to think something's wrong. This doesn't look right. One hand's up here, one hand's down here. That doesn't look very symmetrical. Likewise, if I conduct like this, again, your brain begins to think, wait a second, something is really wrong. I'm not sure what's happening, but this looks unbalanced. So again, the human brain, what we see, we wanna make sense of these things. And so we actually really appreciate and respond to symmetry very well, whether it's in the center and the sides, up, and down, our minds want to make sense of what we're seeing. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that when we're standing, we stand with a posture that is going to allow for a nice, easy, um, full breathing from our singers. And we're never going to collapse on the lungs themselves. So again, posture, extremely important. The next thing, we want to make sure that uh, we can take consideration for our hands, that um, how we use our hands, we want to make sure that when we are using them in conducting, that the fingers are not too far apart, they're not too close together, not too loose, you know, not too high, um, but that there's a certain amount of control in how we use this gesture. So now, as I'm conducting, we have our posture in place, we have a good sense of our hands and the position of our fingers, but then we want to make sure also that the arm itself is not locked into place or too fixed in position, but feels and flows organically from the body. So from the center of the body out. So when we conduct, there's feeling of organic, very easy motion through this part of the body. So we're not too tense, not too loose. Um, but we, again, make sure that we are creating something that is symmetrical, something that is pleasing to the eye. Again, the singers, they notice these things and even subconsciously, it can affect the way they sing if we're not careful. Next, let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of a beat pattern and why the beat pattern is so important for the conductor. And you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, a two pattern, a three pattern, and a four pattern. Right? I think you've all seen those before. But let's take a step backwards and look even closer, not just at the beat pattern, but let's talk about the beat itself. And there are three parts to the beat that we want to make sure we understand very clearly, okay? so. When we're talking about the beat, there are three parts to this. One, the ictus. Now, the ictus, that's just the beat itself. Boom, 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 boom. The actual point of articulation, the beat. 
the second part now. The rebound. Now, the rebound is that moment right after or right following the ictus. So we have boing, 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 boing. And it's that moment right after the ictus. Now, what's important about the rebound, and this is something we're going to talk about a little bit more later, is something called directionality. Now, the rebound direction helps indicate to the ensemble where we are in the measure and what's coming next. So if we simply conduct a series of ones, one, 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 we're not sure where we are in the, in the pattern. We're not sure where we are in the measure. Is this beat three? Is this beat four? It's hard to tell sometimes. So instead, if we have one and two, three, four, that directionality helps everybody understand, ah, one and two, three. So we know where we're going next. And believe me, if you are, let's say, um, someone in the choir like basses, and you've been sitting out with maybe 20 measures of rest, it's important that you know where your next entrance is. Yeah. Let's talk about the third part of the beat. preparation or the prep. Now, the prep usually happens immediately following the rebound, so they become one and the same in the gesture. So if I have beat one, rebound, all of a sudden this becomes a preparation for beat two. Rebound, preparation for three, rebound, preparation for four, rebound, Preparation for one. Does that make sense? Okay, watch this for a second and see if this helps at all. If you look at that moment, following each beat, we see that there is this time where the line begins to turn towards the next ictus. That is when the rebound becomes the preparation. Again, rebound becomes preparation. However, Remember, it's because of directionality that we know where we're going. So we have essentially one rebound prep, two rebound prep, three rebound prep, four rebound prep, one. So if we have a four pattern, right? Basic four pattern, and we wanna mark each beat. So there's beat one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. Now, what we want to do is remember that immediately following each beat is the rebound. But then as that rebound moves, it becomes the preparation. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of small in the video. So, in effect, we have... Beat one, rebound, prep. Now, here's beat two, and immediately after beat two, we have a rebound, which becomes the preparation for beat three. Here, beat three, immediately following we have the rebound, which becomes the preparation for beat four. And you know what's coming next? Here's beat four, followed by the rebound, which becomes the preparation for beat one. As a conductor, our job is to constantly know where we are in the pattern, where we are in the music at all times, so that if we need to, we can help the ensemble with the music itself. So one skill, one task that you can do for yourself is to think this as you conduct. So you have one rebound prep, two rebound prep, three, rebound prep, four, rebound prep, one. I hope that makes sense.